I would like to say I would do it if I'd been like an unmarried woman back then, you know, take life by the horns and go to Alaska. Decision making is not my strong suit, so it'd be like, oh, I really wanna do that. Ooh, but what about all the risk? Oh, I don't know. So like, by the time I decided, like maybe the rush would have already been over. <laughs> My family vacations as a kid, most of our like big family vacations were actually taken to national parks. I've been to Montana, Alaska, Wyoming. I think my family like chronically can't sit still. And so like us going to the beach is always like almost miserable because <laughs> nobody knows how to like just chill out. All right, so here we go. Let's find out what state we got. It would be a folly not to rush to this last frontier. Okay, I will give you guys a geek moment for me. One of my favorite TV shows is Alaska, The Last Frontier. <laughs> Shout out to the Kilchers. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of homesteading, like, I think I could do it. You know, might starve through the winter because I can't grow vegetables. So I think we are going for Alaska. So let's get started. We have our first specimens. Let's get it out of the fancy bag. I think it's a bolo. We have a salmon. Oh, and they're little nuggets. All that texture on it is actually like little individual nuggets. Looks like it's been hammered onto the packing. And that salmon is like actually really neat. Like the mouth is hollow and everything. Like somebody worked pretty hard to make that salmon look right. Alaska is the second most gold producing state in the nation. The first is actually Nevada. So Alaska produces like an obscene amount of gold. A lot of it is measured in something that is called a troy ounce. A troy ounce is actually a heavier unit of measurement than a singular ounce. Troy ounces are mostly used with precious metals. A place in France because they were such a vital area in trading of precious metals like gold and silver, the unit of measurement that was decided upon was a troy ounce because a lot of it went through that area and was measured to that standard. So we've got a gold Old bolo salmon. I'm not even gonna try getting all of those out. I don't know if you guys can see these, but they're like teeny tiny. I think if I tried to get these out, I would sneeze or something and they would go like everywhere. Then we have a little bit of a bigger nugget. This would be placer gold, it's not crystalline, and it obviously isn't from a seam. So the way that you can tell that this is placer gold is that it doesn't have like hard edges on it. If you directly take it out of the seam, it'll have more hard edges where it's been like squished between rocks. When you have placer gold, that gold was eroded out and then washed downstream. And so it ends up becoming rounded and more pebble-like. Most of the gold mining in Alaska is actually hard rock mining in primary deposits. These huge, big earth-moving mines, and then they're essentially like grinding up the rocks. In 2015, they had almost 74, 75,000 troy ounces of gold from placer mining. The crazy part is there was less than 200 people that were estimated to be placer deposit miners in Alaska at that time. And it's very seasonal, of course, you know, when you're mining in Alaska, you have to worry about a little something called winter. <laughs> everything freezes, everything's like hard frozen. Gold in Alaska was discovered by Russians back in like the 1840s. They found placer gold in, I believe it was the Kenai, and they actually never really mined it. When it was purchased by the United States for, I really think it was like two cents an acre, <laughs> like dirt cheap. They rediscovered those placer deposits and we basically started another gold rush. Speaking of the Kenai, I have gone fishing for salmon on the Kenai. Oh, I was 12 maybe? Yeah, I stood in a river for eight hours and did not eat or go to the bathroom for eight hours because by golly, I wanted my fish. Your parents were okay with that? Oh, I mean, eventually they drug me out of there and made me eat something. Did you get your fish? I got two. So I mean like eight hours of fishing, I get two. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Like literally for years, I could not eat salmon because I would eat it and I'd be like, oh, this just doesn't taste as good. It was so good. <laughs> okay, okay, I got it. All right, so my clue. Taken from a green monster. I think I have a good idea of 
what this is. So we have an epidote crystal from Green Monster Mountain. This may look black. It's actually really dark green. It's got some cool like chevron lines right here and that almost makes me think it might be a bit of a twin. So there's actually a group of minerals called the epidote group and epidote is the most common member of the epidote group. Go figure. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Green Monster Mountain. Main ore minerals that come out of there are actually like gold, silver, and iron. But now it's actually predominantly mined as a mineral specimen mined for really pretty, very big epidote crystals. There's a little bit of quartz right here and you can actually get really cool combinations of like bigger quartz crystals and like epidote crystals all mixed in together with one another. It's really pretty. I just really like the name of the mine, the green monster mountain with the epidote mixed into everything. You get those gravels and stuff like that are actually pretty green. I've never been to the green monster mountain, but I have been able to go and see Denali. Just jutting right out of these big poofy clouds are these white jagged peaks. It was pretty cool to get to see. You know, on that same bus trip, I did end up eating a berry that I still don't know why I did it. The guy that was there, he went over to these bushes and he picked a whole bunch of berries. So he goes, okay, so who wants to try one of these berries? I mean, he straight called them soap berries. So I don't know what I was thinking. And it's like the greatest berry you have ever tried for the first like two seconds it's on your tongue. And it lives, it lives up to its name very well. So immediately after it's like, oh, mistakes were made. It was so bad. It really, it really was like putting soap straight in your mouth. Like bears must not have very good taste buds because apparently they enjoy them. God, it was so gross. It's so gross. So we have another one of our famous Alaskan minerals. Ew. Gems for kids. Oh, we got two in here. So we have some garnets. A single crystal and then garnet in schist from Wrangell, Alaska. Wrangell, Alaska is actually this really neat place. The Wrangell garnet mines were actually bequeathed to the children of the town so that they could earn money during the summer when the tourists came into town. They would go and they would dig the garnets out of the rock walls and sell them in town. And like, you know, someone makes stuff out of them. But essentially it was so that the kids would have like spending money. In Alaska, you know, everything's kind of different than it is here in the continental United States. You have to come up with some interesting ways of making money or making a living. These are almondine garnets. This one actually has some really perfect like crystal faces on it. This is actually a really good example of a euhedral crystal. Euhedral crystals just basically mean a complete crystal that you can see very well-defined, well-developed crystal faces. And then right here, you've got the standard schist that these garnets occur in. Schist is defined as a metamorphic rock that basically has had enough heat and pressure to make it turn a little bit plastic. And essentially you get a realignment of these crystals. And that's why it looks really shiny, kind of sparkly. So you have this really cool schist rock with these garnets in it. There's actually a cabin, but it's called the Garnet Ledge Cabin that you can go and stay in that is accessible by, I believe like float boat or by kayaking. I want to go there someday and I want to stay there. You can rent it. It's pretty cheap, but it's uh, a little Spartan. You get your water from the creek out back. No electricity and firewood is not particularly provided. You have to figure it out for yourself. There's like a back trail that you can take that takes you to the Wrangell Garnet Mine. And so you can stay there and go mine for garnets while you're there. People also stay there to go fishing. Apparently there is a fish in the area that people like to go fishing for and it's called a hooligan which is really weird. I don't even really know what it looks like. But yeah, so it's just really interesting and a really cool Alaskan tradition to have there. Wrangle garnets for the kids. Okay, so our last box. These gems don't just come from a mountain. These gems are a mountain. All right, the Alaska State Gemstone is jade. So we've got two pieces of what is called nephrite jade. Nephrite jade can actually be made of a few minerals. So one of which is something called tremolite. It's actually in the asbestos family. Don't, don't freak out. 
That does not mean that it's like dangerous in any way, shape, or form. Asbestos in mineralogy just refers to a length to width ratio of the crystals. And it's actually a three to one ratio. Tremolite and nephrite jade, like it is not going to hurt you. So don't worry about it. Wear your jade, it's totally safe. If you were to look at this under the microscope, it does look pretty like kind of interlockingly fibrous E. Very kind of swirly, really neat looking. And then you have something called chromite, and chromite is exactly what you're thinking. It is an ore of chromium. A little bit metallic. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can turn this and I see like little pips of light, which means that there's some little teeny tiny chromite crystals that are right at the surface that are catching the light and they've got a little bit of a shine to them. The green color is caused by chromium and some iron. What's crazy is that this Alaska Skate gem is actually pretty famous for making up an entire mountain. There is the Jade Mountain in Alaska and it's found along the Kobuk River. So it is now a national park, so obviously it's not mined from there anymore. But the mountain is just famous for being super rich in jade, which is really cool. There's actually like a really long history of the native peoples in the area using the jade for tools, for carvings. In the Kobuk National Park, they actually have like a workshop there where they still fashion and make traditional jewelry and items out of the jade that they find in the river. It's a beautiful material, but it's also very tough. It's very hard to break. So for somebody like me who tends to abuse their jewelry, <laughs> It's a really good material to wear. It's very silky feeling, and I don't know if it's just the polish on it. It actually feels really pretty nice. All right, guys, so I want you all to take a look at this awesome bolo with a salmon on it made out of Alaskan gold. Thanks for joining me on our, well, trip through gems of Alaska and I guess my trip down memory lane. Let us know in the comments what state you want us to do next. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell, and I will see you guys next time.